Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my video series, Mastering Lightroom Classic CC. In this video, we're going to talk about collections. We've already learned that Lightroom keeps our images in folders, and those are the actual folders that are on our computer. So if you look over here at the left-hand panel of the library module, you can see there's a tab, Folders, and you can see the file structure. It's raw files, then under raw files I have two folders, Buffalo History Museum, Buffalo Zoo, and inside of those folders I have folders that actually contain the images. And those are the actual folders that are on my computer in the same file structure, raw files, Buffalo History Museum, Buffalo Zoo, then folders that contain the images. So that's great. What you're seeing over here is actually what is on your hard drive. But there are times when you may want to group images together for a specific reason. In the case of animals, maybe I want to group all my eagles, eagle images together and all the um, arctic foxes images together. But Maybe I went to the zoo a dozen times, or to use that analogy I used in a previous video, maybe I went to 30 different zoos, and I have dozens of folders of animals, and I have eagle images in dozens of folders, and I have arctic foxes in dozens of folders, but I'd like to group them together in their own group so I don't have to go from folder to folder to folder to find all the eagles or all the arctic foxes. Well, that's where collections comes in. You could put images from different folders into the same collection. So you could find them, process them, look at them, whatever, all in one place. You don't have to go searching for them. Now, there's three different types of collections in Lightroom. One thing I should add about collections, they're virtual. They don't take up any disk space. So actually, I could make a folder called Eagles if I wanted to. And then I would maybe drag my image up into this Eagles folder. Well, it's actually going to move the physical image on my hard drive into that Eagles folder. I could make a copy of the image and put a copy in that folder, but that takes up more disk space. Collections are great because they don't take up any more disk space. Only Lightroom knows about them. So if you close Lightroom down, you won't find any evidence of any collection being on your hard drive. But, again, it's very powerful because you could go across folders and group things together. And I started to say there's three different collections in Lightroom. The first one we're going to talk about is called a Quick Collection. If you look up here under Catalog in the left-hand panel of the Library module, you'll see that there is Quick Collection. It has a little plus next to it. Right now it has zero images in it. That little plus means it's a targeted collection. And what targeted means... It means that with a mouse click or with a keystroke, I could easily add an image into that collection because that's the targeted collection. Now, for example, if I want to move maybe all these uh, images of Arctic foxes into that targeted quick collection, to do that with a mouse click, if you look at the postage stamp of the image in the film strip, You'll see in the top right hand corner there's this little circle. If I click on that circle, it adds it to the quick collection. You see it's right there. So it automatically will just put that image in that quick collection when I click on that little circle. So you could easily go through your images on the film strip and click on that little circle and it will add it to the quick collection. Another or a way to take it out of the click click quick collection is to just click on that little circle again. And I removed it from the quick collection. You can see there's zero there now. So if I want to go through, I could again just click on that little circle or I could use a keyboard shortcut of B. B is in boy. So if I want to put all the Arctic foxes in that quick collection, I'll just hit the B key. Now I have auto advance on. We learned that in our last video. So I automatically went to the next image. I'll just hit B. I want to add this. It's an Arctic fox. B, 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 and B. So we added all those images 
to the Quick Collection. We'll go up there, and there they are, by simply hitting the B key on my keyboard. Now, if you want to take them out of the Quick Collection, just hit the B key again. So B, B, and so on. And now they're all removed from the Quick Collection. So it's very easy to add images to the Quick Collection. Just click on that circle or hit B. Now I mentioned that's the targeted collection because it has that little plus sign here. <clears throat> you could move your targeted collection to a different collection and that's where we're going to talk about next. Just a normal everyday collection. If you look over here at the left panel, you can see that there is a tab collections. This tab is in all the modules. So you could put images in your collections, in a specific collection, and access it in any module. So a lot of people, when they're creating a book or a slideshow, they'll put a bunch of images in a collection. Then they'll go to the book or slideshow module and they're there. They're easy to access and add to their slideshow or their book. And we'll cover that when we cover those modules. But whereas with the quick collection, that's only accessible in the library module. So you have to go to library module, click on this to go into that collection, and then you could go to the develop module and process the images. So collections, are available everywhere. Now if you want to create a collection, click on this little plus sign right here. A little menu will pop up. And there's three different choices at the top. Create collection, that's what we're going to do in a second. Create a smart collection, that's the third type of collection in Lightroom. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Or create a collection set. That's really just a folder that contains a bunch of different collections. Maybe you have a folder of zoo images. So you have a zoo collection. And then under the zoo collection, you have a number of collections. Bald eagles, arctic foxes, uh, black vultures, things like that. So you could then put them or keep them ordered or sorted in a very specific way. Now, I'm going to create a normal collection right here. Create collection. And now we could give our collection a name. So I'm going to call this arctic foxes. Arctic fox, that's good enough. Now, do I want to include the selected photos? I'm actually not selecting, I'm not clicked on a fox. If I was, maybe I'd include it just to save me that step. So I'm not going to do it. But you know, below that too, it says make new virtual copies. We're going to talk about virtual copies in a future video. But you could make a copy of an image that doesn't take up any more disk space. It behaves just like it's its own image. So I could have two copies of this image. They're identical in every way, but I could process one one way and process another one a totally different way. Maybe make one very colorful, one black and white. There are two copies processed differently. They don't take up at any extra disk space. You don't have two copies sitting on your hard drive. They're virtual. Just Lightroom knows about them. A lot of people like to add virtual copies to a collection. They don't like to add the original image. It's up to you. I personally usually don't you, uh, put virtual copies into a collection. I will put the original image. So um, I'm going to not include the selected photo because I'm making a collection of Arctic Fox. Now set as target collection. That was that little plus sign up here. So if I set this as the target collection, I could easily add images into it by clicking on that little circle or hitting the B key on the keyboard. So I'm going to set this as the target collection and click on create. Now I have this folder or this collection, it's not really a folder, of Arctic Fox. And you can see the little plus sign is there that's indicate, indicating that it's a targeted collection. Now. I could come through and I want to put Arctic Fox in there. I could just take one from the film strip, drag it, and put it in just like that. And that is probably the typical way most people add images into a collection, just drag and drop. Again, if you want to just, because I made it a targeted collection, I could just hit the B key on my keyboard or I could click on that circle. I'm just going to hit the B key. And because I have Auto Advance on, I'm going to the next image every time. So you could see now that the images are in this collection. Now to remove the image from the collection, because I made it a targeted collection, I could just hit that B key again. That will toggle off the uh, target. 
so that it is no longer in the collection. Or I could hit this little circle right here, and that takes it out of the targeted collection, in this case, the Arctic Fox. But what if we didn't have this as the target collection? For instance, let's go back up to Quick Collection. I'm going to right click, and I'm going to go Set as Target Collection. So I've removed the target from Arctic Fox, and I put the target back on the Quick Collection. So there's, if I hit the circle now, it doesn't take it out of this collection. It put it in that collection as well. Well, I don't want that. I, don't, I want to take it out of this collection. Just hit the delete key on your keyboard. When you hit the delete key, it just takes it out of the collection. You're, don't worry. You're not deleting it off the hard drive. You're just deleting it from the collection. So we could hit that delete key and take those all out of that collection. Now, I mentioned that there is a kind of folder where you could keep multiple collections. If we click on this little plus sign again and we create a collection set, and I call this Zoo Animals. And I quick click Create. You can see that that is there all by itself. But I could take this collection of Arctic Fox now and just drag it into that, into that group. So now I have it. You can see how it's in that structure now that it's underneath the Zoo Animals. So if I create another collection, you know, called Bald Eagles, I could drag that into that collection set as well. So I have them all grouped together, and then I could close up the collection set with this little expose triangle there. So that is what the collection set does. Now I mentioned that there's a third type of collection. It's called a smart collection. This is the most powerful collection there is. Now I'm going to go to a folder here. And um, let's just go to loop view so we see an image. So I'm going to create this smart collection. Let's click on this little plus sign again, and we're going to create smart collection. Now, a smart collection looks for some attribute that you assigned to an image, and it will automatically put that image into a collection. Now, I'm going to like give this a name instead of Smart Collection. Let's call this Flagged. Okay, and you could put it inside of a collection set. I could click on that. I'm going to put it inside of the Zoo Animals collection set that I already created. And you could either have it match all of the rules you specify, or any of the rules, or none of the rules. Well, we're going to have it. I'm only going to create one rule for this demonstration, so we'll do all. So you could create multiple rules, and you could have it either, uh, if it satisfies any one of those multiple rules, it will go into the collection, or if it satisfies, it has to satisfy every single one of those rules to make its way into that collection. Now what I'm going to do here is there's all these different like uh, attributes for the image that you could choose from. You could even choose from different metadata. So as you import images, they'll automatically go into the smart collection. So you could, it's very powerful. So you could get things into the collection automatically without doing anything. Now in this case, I am talking about a flagged image. So it's going to be the pick flag. And I want it to, is or is not, flagged. Unflagged or rejected. So I want all my flagged images to automatically go into this collection. Now I could get another rule by clicking on this little plus sign right here, and I could have another one now. I could have the rating be equal to three stars or two stars, something like that. So it has to be greater than or equal to two stars, and it has to have the pick flag on for it to make it into the collection. I'm, not, I'm going to remove this last one, but you could just keep adding rules, and then the image either has to satisfy either one of the rules or all the rules to get in. And you choose that right here. So we're going to get rid of this here. So only images that I have the pick flag on will go into this collection. So I'm going to click Create. So there you can see that I already have some that had the pick flag on them from our previous video. So you could see they automatically got put into the collection. If I want to get them out of this collection, I have to turn that flag off. So I'll hit the U key for unflag, and you can see that it removed the flag. 
So I'm removing the rule that put it into, not removing the rule, I'm not satisfying the rule that put it into the collection to begin with. And that's how you get it out of the collection. So we'll go back up to our animals. And let's say I want to go through these. I'm culling images. And this is what a lot of people use collections for. They'll color images using the pick flags. And they'll automatically get put into the smart collection. Then they'll go to the smart collection to process their images. So I like this one. I'm going to hit the P key. This one I don't really care for, but I don't want to delete it. So I'm going to hit the U key the U key, the U key, the P key, the, that was a little blurry, U key, U key, P key, uh, P key, P key, U key, P. It's kind of weird saying that. Uh, so, I, so I could quickly go through these is the point. So we'll go through some of them. All right, so I went through these images like that one too. So we'll go through and we have them flagged, many of them flagged. And if I go to a, my flagged smart collection, there they are. So I could come in here now and easily just process them. Or maybe I want to make a book or maybe I want to make a slideshow, something like that. They're right here in this collection. And again, I could go across... Um, folder. So I could come over here and just hit and flag a bunch of these and they're going to be in that smart collection. There they are down here. See them? So you could go across folders. That's where collections are super powerful and they come in really, really handy. The three different kinds of collections. Quick collection, regular collection, and smart collection. And remember you could move the target around from a regular collection to a to the quick collection up here in the catalog. And very easy to move the target. If I wanted to now make this Arctic Fox folder that has nothing in it a targeted collection, just right click on it, set as target collection. And it removed the plus sign from the quick collection and it put it there. So now any image that I come in and hit uh, the B key or hit this little circle will get put into that target collection. If I want to put the target collection on a different folder, I could just go back up, let's say, to this quick collection, right click, set as target collection. So you can move that around. If, if you want to remove a collection or collection set, just click on the collection you want to remove, click on this little minus sign, you'll get this prompt, then just click delete and you'll remove it. Again, you're not deleting any images. You're just removing the collection. If you want to remove this smart collection, just click the minus sign, and you removed it. Now we have this collection set. If I want to remove that, just click that minus sign, and that is gone as well. So it's very easy to create collections or delete collections. And again, you're not removing any images from your hard drive or from the Lightroom catalog when you either delete the image from the collection or delete an entire collection. That's it for this video. Thank you everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.